Sometimes you really want to move something, and then there's other times when you just want to move something. But then there's those times when you just want to move something. You can never have enough mallets. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright, and welcome to my shop. A uh, viewer of the channel contacted me, Tyler Woods, and he said, have you ever played with live oak? I know you love white oak, but have you ever played with live oak? And I had to say, no, I've never played with live oak. Um, it's fairly common um, in other parts of the United States, but not very common around here. And he said, well, I've got a chunk of it I'll send you and you can play with it. And I thought this would be kind of fun. So he sent me this block. And I have to say, this is absolutely incredible stuff. Um, extremely wide, wild, wavy grain, um, just really kind of cool and extremely dense, uh, incredibly dense. This is actually the wood that old iron size is made out of and we could see uh, cannonballs bouncing off of it. Um, extremely, extremely dense wood and just completely interlocked. Um, a pain to work with from what I've been told. But I thought, you know what, this would make a fantastic mallet. And I've been using these kids mallets that I made a while ago out of some old elm. And uh, I have a video on making these for, for my kids. But I often grab them for carving mallets because they fit my hand really nicely. And I'd like to have something denser and heavier. I figured, carving mallet. So let's actually dive into working with some live oak. And I'll give you some ideas about what this is made out of. A very beautiful wood. And I'm looking forward to experimenting with it. So let's take a look. This live oak tended to be a little bit more difficult than I was anticipating. <laughs> I needed to bring this block down to a slightly smaller size. It was about six inches across, and I only needed about three and a half inches wide, uh, actually about three and a half inches square. So I ripped it uh, in two different directions to get a square chunk out of this and uh, the full length of the block. The, uh, the frame saw really did fairly quick work of it, but this stuff was... was a lot harder than I anticipated. It was a, a solid amount of workout to get this cut all the way down. So after cutting it one way, I can cut it the other way until I break through. And now I have my block that's approximately three and a half inches by three and a half inches squared. Now the next thing I need to do before taking this to the lathe is to take down the corners on it. A, uh, a foot powered lathe does not have a whole lot of force behind it and the corners really take a lot of time to, to to slowly work down and it's a lot faster just to chalk it up and hit it with the uh, draw knife or in this case just a scrub plane. Uh, I did a video a while ago on putting together a scrub plane out of a cheap old number five and uh, an invaluable tool for it, just taking off a lot of material. I mean it was so fast with this even with this really twisted grain hard wood it really only took about uh, two and a half three minutes to bring this down to a general round um, shape. Next thing is to find center, and I made this uh, center finder out of an old square and another ruler. <laughs> One of these days I actually should make a center finder. It might make a good video. Once I found center on both ends, then I just use an awl and push into the end. Uh, this is the way the live centers can chalk up on it. Now we can start to bring this thing down to round, and this is probably the most difficult part because it's hitting and missing and hitting and missing. But with a bit of work, it comes down. And the roughing gouge, I, I did almost all of the turning on this with the roughing gouge. Uh, just a, a good general purpose tool. And uh, you can use the, the sides, you can scrape with it, and you can remove a lot of material. Next thing I want to do is actually create a little dish in one end. And this dish will be the spot that the rope um, rides in so it doesn't move all over the place. And the, the nice thing about the spring pole lathe is you can move the rope wherever you need it to so you can continue to work on different portions of it. But I'll let it ride in that dish and uh, work down the rest of the piece. I just want to bring it all into round so I have a round surface to work with. Once I have it in a round, then I can start working on taking it down to a handle. Um, where the rope is wrapped around, that will become the head, and the rest of it will be the handle. I want to bring that down to about 7 eighths in diameter. I found 7 eighths to be about the right size for my hand and what my, my pinky wants to wrap around. Uh, this took uh, a good while. There's a lot of material here, and this, this stuff was, was difficult to work, not to mention the center of the tree was running down the side, and so I'm always running into that, and it was basically like working with a knot the whole time. I brought one point down to the thickness I wanted, and then started bringing back the, the rest of the well, the rest of the handle. Um, the handle half uh, probably took me a good 30 minutes to take down. Uh, it was slow going, as this was... Uh, well, it was very easy to catch, and you can tell the green wood 
uh, because the, the darker wood there is where it's wet and the lighter wood is just where the surface has dried off. So this is working with it wet which is a lot easier than working with it dry. And even then, uh, it, it still took a lot of work. I really wouldn't want to do this with it dry. The next thing I want to do is turn a pommel on the handle end. Uh, the pommel will be kind of the counterbalance to it because you'll be grabbing it up by the head as opposed to mid-handle. And having a pommel on there just make, allows your wrist to not feel as much of the, the, tor the torsion from a heavy head on it. It also adds a little bit more weight so you can... Uh, um, bang a little bit more with it. <laughs> but I'm just going to shape this into a, a general round shape, something that's kind of pleasing to the eye with a flat end on it so I can still stand it up. And uh, once I got most of it into shape, um, then I switched over to using the scraper. And I used the scraper to clean everything down. But uh, it's just a lot of little slowly working through it and then scraping it out. Uh, I really enjoyed the scraper. Uh, you can start to see some of the, the curls coming off. And uh, this was a, a lot more fun to work with than I was expecting. I was expecting this to be a, a very, very difficult cut. But once that is done, then I can move the rope down onto the handle and carve the head. Now, the fun thing about this is once I move the rope down onto the handle, the RPMs drastically increase. And I go from like 700 RPMs up to almost 2,000 RPMs. Uh, because with each foot press, I'm getting about nine rotations, whereas before I was only getting about two rotations. So it's kind of fun to work at a faster pace suddenly. Now I can sand it down and bring it to nice and smooth surface. And we uh, went through the grits with a couple different bow sanders, and I have a video on making these bow sanders. It just makes it a little bit easier to hold on to it and uh, work the shape. And uh, voila, I have the mallet shape that I want. Now, of course, this being my channel, I'm going to finish it with uh, BLO. This boiled linseed oil is stuff that I've made myself. And if you want to see videos on that, I have those as well. Uh, it's just a, a great finish for this. Let it soak in. And as this is green, it's going to dry over time. And there's probably going to be a couple small checks in it. But because of how this is so interlocked and so twisting, um, it should stay fairly well. And man, I love this. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous, beautiful build. Starting off with this block of live oak and now having a tool. I'm really loving this stuff. It, it turned far easier than I was expecting. Part of that was because it was green. Um, and green wood is always far easier to turn, has less tendency to, to be you know grunky. Uh, the dry ends of this were very difficult to turn. I know if this was dry, it would be a very hard wood to turn. Um, the planing of it, as you can see, was... Um, yeah, it's, I mean, the grain goes every direction, so it is a difficult, difficult to work, wood to work with, but holy cow, is it so worth it. This is just absolutely gorgeous, and I'm really looking forward to using this more. Now, some people might be asking why this huge pommel on the end, um, and that's really for balance. I'm just like in a sword, um, you have a pommel on the end, and one of the main purposes is to balance out the rest of the blade, and so you have this heavy weight right behind your hand. With a carving mallet, you actually grab the head itself, and this weight then distributes from your center of gravity here you have the same amount of force on this side and this side so it actually feels better in the hand to have a little bit more weight at the back rather than just having a shaft right here and it, it fits perfectly into the palm of the hand so you can actually be tapping right between your fingers so when you're carving it's just tap 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 then having the weight back here as the rotational force is around the the center of the fulcrum um, you're actually going to be having this weight transferring into the force going forward. So this weight back here is actually a useful weight when uh, when tapping away. And uh, it provides a little bit more force for the same amount of wrist movement. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to using this and it is a lot of fun um, thinking about what I should do with the rest of this live oak. If you have any ideas, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear those. And uh, I'm <laughs> looking forward to it. This is a, this is a really cool wood and uh, I still like white oak, but Live Oak, I'm going to have to play with this some more. So I hope you guys have liked this. I do want to say thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are the reason why I can keep putting out videos like this. If you'd like to find out more about Patreon or help out with that, you can do so right down there. Also, if you'd like to subscribe and see some behind-the-scenes footage, you can do that as well. That's about it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day.